Welcome to Indigo Biosciences Assay Tutorial. Indigo's assay kits are offered in 96 well, 3 by 32 well, and 384 well plate formats. The following tutorial demonstrates the use of the 96 well format assay plate. In general, Indigo's cell base receptor assays employ one of two alternative assay workflows. One protocol requires that the reporter cells undergo a pre-incubation period prior to the addition of treatment media, while in the other protocol, reporter cells are co-dispensed into assay wells along with the prepared treatment media. The type of protocol to be followed is specific to the receptor assay being performed. This tutorial demonstrates the 96 well format non-pre-incubation assay, which takes two days to complete. The assay workflow is depicted here in its entirety, but the following tutorial provides a detailed step-by-step -step description of the assay setup and plate processing. It's important to perform all day one manipulations of the assay plate inside a biosafety cabinet or laminar flow hood and to use proper sterile techniques. For greater visual clarity, however, the following demonstration is being performed on an open bench top. The day one workflow begins with retrieving the assay kit from negative 80 degrees Celsius storage. This is a critical step because the reporter cells contained within the kit box are temperature sensitive. Use a sharp instrument to open the tough plastic bag, then carefully cut through the seal in the kit lid. Without delay, retrieve the tube of reporter cells from the kit box and submerge it in dry ice. Work quickly so that the tube of reporter cells does not warm up significantly above negative 80 degrees. Back at the lab bench, remove from the kit box the tubes of cell recovery medium and compound screening medium. These may be transferred directly into a 37 degree Celsius water bath. Also retrieve the vial of reference agonist and place it in an ice bucket. Retrieve the white 96 well assay plate and place it in the biosafety hood to equilibrate to room temperature. The remaining kit components are a tube of detection substrate and a tube of detection buffer. When the two tubes are combined, they generate the luciferase detection reagent, which will be used on day two. These two tubes may be stored overnight in a dark refrigerator for use the next day. Now use the thawed compound screening medium to prepare the various test compound and reference compound treatment media that will be applied to the reporter cells. Note that all treatment media are prepared at two times concentrations relative to their respective final assay concentrations. Put these prepared treatment media aside while you next prepare the suspension of reporter cells.
Next, use the warm cell recovery medium to perform a rapid thaw of the frozen reporter cells. This is a critical step. First, retrieve the cell recovery medium from the water bath and sanitize the outside surface with an ethanol swab and put it into the biosafety hood. Next, transfer the tube of frozen reporter cells out of the dry ice and into a rack in the biosafety hood. Without delay, dispense the entire volume of warm cell recovery medium directly into the tube of frozen cells. Immediately transfer the tube into the 37 degrees Celsius water bath for a minimum of 10 minutes. This allows for complete thawing of the frozen cell pellet. You are now ready to set up the assay plate. First, retrieve the tube of reporter cell suspension from the water bath and sanitize the outside surface of the tube using a 70% alcohol swab. In the biosafety hood, gently invert tube of reporter cells several times to ensure a homogeneous cell suspension. Note that if you are intending to perform antagonist mode assays, first supplement the cell suspension with the reference agonist. We recommend using a concentration that is equal to two times the EC80 concentration of the agonist. Pour the cell suspension into a reservoir and using an 8-channel pipette, dispense 100 microliters per well of the cell's suspension into the assay plate. It is important to prevent cells from settling in the reservoir during the dispensing period. Next, dispense into the appropriate assay wells 100 microliters of the previously prepared two times concentrated treatment media. Transfer the assay plate into a cell culture incubator. The internal incubator environment should be 37 degrees Celsius, 5% CO2, and approximately 70% relative humidity. Allow the plate to incubate for 22 to 24 hours.
It is now day two. Today's manipulations do not require special regard for aseptic techniques and therefore may be performed on a bench top. Approximately 30 minutes before intending to quantify receptor activity, remove detection substrate and detection buffer from the refrigerator and place them in a low light area so that they may equilibrate to room temperature. Turn on the plate reader and set it to luminescence mode. Program the instrument to perform a preliminary 5 second plate shake before reading the first assay well. Program the read time to 500 millisecond per well. After the tubes of detection buffer and detection substrate have equilibrated to room temperature, combine them to generate luciferase detection reagent. It's most convenient to perform this step directly in the media basin. Gently rock the basin several times to mix the solution, then set it aside for later use. Retrieve the assay plate from the incubator and discard the media contents. The recommended method is to manually eject the media contents into a waste container, then gently tap the inverted plate onto a clean, absorbent paper towel to remove residual droplets. Cells will remain tightly adhered to well bottoms. Dispense 100 microliters of luciferase detection reagent into each well of the assay plate. Allow the assay plate to rest at room temperature out of direct light exposure for 5 to 10 minutes. Transfer the assay plate to the plate reader and press start to quantify luminescence per assay well. The raw RLU data generated by the plate reader must now be mathematically manipulated. Replicates RLU values are first averaged and corresponding values of standard deviation are calculated. Averaged RLU values should then be normalized to allow for accurate and meaningful interpretations of the experimental results. For agonist assays, normalized data are most commonly presented in one of two ways as depicted here. The left-hand plot presents data in terms of fold activation, also referred to as signal to background. The right-hand plot presents data in terms of relative percent activation. Specifically, the activation response delivered by the test compound is divided by the maximal activation response of the reference agonist. This ratio is presented in terms of percent whereby the maximal activation response of the reference agonist is equal to 100%. In both examples, the normalized data are plotted against the respective log-transformed concentrations of the test compound treatments. For antagonist assays, it is particularly helpful to normalize averaged RLU values in terms of relative percent inhibition. 
specifically normalizing to the maximal inhibitory response of the reference antagonist, which has been mathematically manipulated to equal 100% inhibition. Again, the normalized data are plotted against the respective log-transformed concentrations of the test compound treatments. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to contact Indigo's technical service team at the listed email address.